Remember when Metro Manila had double deckers? Yep, there was a time in the 80s when jeepneys weren't the kings of our streets. We take a look at how these cool buses came to Metro Manila and why they eventually disappeared. When I first heard about the Double Decker program, I was actually a college student in Los Angeles. And my father called me and told me that my uncle was going to Scotland on a business trip, actually going to Europe on a business trip, and he needed help. Reyes's father, Fernando, was the head of Manila Motor Works. This was the manufacturing company in charge of assembling those double deckers in the 80s. The project was led by the Metro Manila Transit Corporation, better known as the MMTC the same body behind the capital region's first line of premium air-conditioned buses, the so-called Love Bus. Just backtrack a little bit, when Metro Manila Transit Corporation was set up, uh, the government wanted a uh, fast-track production of buses because they wanted hundreds of buses eventually came into the thousands. So what they did was they gathered the local manufacturers. We were one of them, Manila Motor Works. See, there were two things. There's the British Leyland chassis, by British Leyland, and there was the Walter Alexander double-decker body. So uh, those units, both of those had to be shipped to the Philippines, assembled in the Philippines, and then put together. We were informed by the Walter Alexander people that the only units that they will honor the warranty are the units built by Manila Motors. So because of that, we got the exclusive contract. A total of 22 units were built by the Manila Motor Works. And by the early 80s, the entire fleet was serving several city routes. Well, it was a sight to behold because, you know, there were double-decker buses that plied the Rojas Boulevard route, but that, those were mainly for tourist purposes and there were very few. There were not a lot of them. Suddenly now you have, you know, 22 units plying mainly EDSA, I think. And people, obviously, the first thing they do is they want to go to the second floor. <laughs> they want to ride higher to be able to see more. And the favorite seats are always the seats up front, you know, because you can see the most from the seats up front. The problem of attorney Job Crisanto. Attorney Crisanto was the uh, CEO of the Metro Manila Transit Corporation. And he was complaining that they had, I think, almost a dozen different brands. And I remember one time I asked him the questions. I go, sir, what is the best unit that you have? And his answer to me was, Ned, the best unit I have is the one that has available spare parts. Yun nga, nangyari doon, walang support, eh. walang part support. You keep on cannibalizing, kung isa masira, you use it as a parts depot until you go down to zero. I don't think we can get to the point where we can convert everything to double-decker buses, unfortunately, kasi it's, it's too late in the game. Kung if, if we started in 1980 with the double-decker buses, and it was sustained, yung it was yun ang naging, yun ang naging standard na lahat ng buses became that and lahat ng structures built around the height of the double-decker buses. I think we can do it, but I think it might be a kind of scenario where we might be using double-decker buses more on a provincial to Manila kind of. What I mean, for example, is let's say if you're building a system between Clark, uh, Clark Airport and Naiya Airport, you can use a double-decker for that run. I actually am uh, very happy with the interest of the younger people who want change, or younger people who want a better life you know, for themselves and for the country. That, that is the one that I'm most amazed about.